Good morning, first pointers. What's going on? How are you guys today? I hope you guys can hear me, see me. Um, you can ask questions in the comments and I should be able to see them. Um, and yeah, I mean, so today I'm gonna wait for a few minutes and see if we can get some more people on here. Hey, Sharon, what's up? What's up? How are you doing today? How are you faring through this quarantine? Um, Kim, hey Kim, what's going on, girl? How's everyone doing this morning? It's a beautiful day here in Southern California. Memorial weekend is upon us. What is everybody doing for Memorial weekend? <laughs> Good morning, awesome, glad you can hear me. Thanks for letting me know that, Kim. Um, sometimes the sound kind of bounces off the walls in here and kind of get an echo chamber. Um, I've had a lot of questions about nutrition lately. And one of the big burning questions is about protein and how much you should be getting in per day. And that really kind of depends on what you're doing activity wise, how much you're getting after your workouts. And if you're upping your protein beyond what your caloric intake should be, um, really, unless you're a bodybuilder, you don't need to add to protein. Um, it's something pretty basic. I'm gonna actually be reading from my text um, so you can kind of get the technical terms and then I'll break it down a little bit for you. Hey, Rebecca, what's going on, girl? Miss your face. Um, so protein, the primary function of protein is to build and repair body tissue and structures. It's also involved in synthesis of hormones, enzymes, and other regulatory peptides. Additional protein can be used for energy if calories or carbohydrates are insufficient in your diet. So what does that mean? Protein, it builds your skeletal tissue and it builds muscle tissue. And we don't need a whole lot of protein to do those things. Protein is stored for those specific needs. It is not used during your workout. It is specific for muscle and structure building. Um, how much are you supposed to get in every day? It's a big burning question out there. So for the average is about 2000 calories per person a day. If you are trying to lose weight, then there should be a slight calorie deficiency. You wanna have a little deficit there so that your intake is less, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, less than your outtake. So your outtake or your outtake is less than your intake, apologies. Getting it backwards here. Good morning, Fern. Um, so what does that mean? You do not want to be taking in more calories than you're putting out during the day, than you're burning. And that also can, is including your afterburn. Afterburn is huge in this, and that really starts with anti-inflammatory foods and movements that remove inflammation, not overdoing it is a big part of it, making sure that you're getting recovery days in. Those are all really important to rebuilding your muscle structure and getting your body composition back. Again, protein is stored, stored, not used for your energy for the day. It is stored for muscle and structure building only, okay? The only time it is used for energy during the day is if you have a deficiency in your carbohydrates. And that is to say, carbohydrates are the most important thing for your energy for the day. You need to have 75% of greens and vegetables and fruits in your day as well as nuts and seeds and some good fats in there in order for your body to really thrive on its energy levels from those carbohydrates and not be using protein to um, build or keep your energy levels up. And that can actually um, contribute to fatigue, adrenal fatigue too, if you're using your protein source for energy throughout the day. Uh, a lot of people want to know exact measurements on how much protein you're supposed to get in. And really, um, 
the structure of protein, it's amino acids that are linked together by peptide bonds. And that's broken down through your digestive system and absorbed and utilized that way. And so you really wanna be cognizant of the proteins that you're putting into your body. Make sure that they're lean. Make sure they're grass-fed. If you're eating beef, chicken, turkey, make sure that you know where the source is coming from because let's face it, a lot of those things that say organic out there are still injected with certain things and they still have antibiotics put in them and, and steroids, things like that. So really make sure that you know where your protein source is coming from. That being said, I've gotten asked a lot about uh, vegan and vegetarian protein sources. So vegetarian process, uh, sources of protein, there are so many different kinds from spinach to broccoli to kale to collard greens to chard, cauliflower. There are so many different vegetable sources and you need two cups. So two cups of broccoli seems like, wow, that's a lot, or cauliflower, but you mix those vegetables up together, steam them, and you have two cups of vegetables. It's totally doable. I can go through two cups, no problem. I love my veggies and grilled veggies too. I grill them with a little bit of olive oil, Himalayan sea salt, and cracked pepper, and the, those are really the, my favorites. They have the most flavor. I grill a whole bunch of them up and I throw them in the refrigerator a few times a week and they're set for the day. And I can eat them cold, I can eat them warm, I can chop them up, I can put them in a recipe. Um, so yeah, vegetables, huge. Uh, tempeh, tofu, um, so many different protein sources, nuts and seeds, uh, as well as if you are able to have dairy, yogurts, things like that, cashew yogurt, stuff like that is full of protein. So you can get protein through many different sources, just really check where it's coming from. Don't overdo one over the other, make sure to switch things off. It's really important to change things up in your body so that your body has resistance and doesn't really know what you're doing. Like exercise, your body needs to change nutrition around as well so it doesn't get used to one thing. Um, and who wants to eat the same thing all the time? You know, so, you know, broccoli and chicken is not the most fun thing to eat all the time, so switch it up. Um, another great source of protein are, are mushrooms, and mushrooms are free food. You can eat as many as you want. Uh, things like that. Onions, antioxidants. You don't really think of those things as having protein in them, but they're serious protein and antioxidants and superfoods. So again, protein is utilized for number one, muscle and skeletal building, the rebuild your structure. It is stored. It is not used for everyday energy through your workouts or just doing your neat activity, that non-exercise activity, thermogenesis, everything you do throughout the day, brushing your teeth, combing your hair, making your bed, sweeping the floor driving, all of those things. So let's talk about um, how much your body needs per day to get in. So the rule for people that are is sedentary, and I'm reading out of my text so that you guys know exactly what it is, is 0 0.8 grams per kilogram per body weight per day. So, and what's a kilogram? Um, a kilogram, holy cow, my brain just went dead on that. <laughs> what is that? Three. I have to go back into my, on my phone. So 0 0.8, and you'll have to figure this out, 0 0.8 grams of protein per kilograms of body weight, okay? And that's per day. So yes, that's right. Thank you, Fern. I was going into the three, 2.2 pounds. Yes, and yes, hemp and pea protein, that's right. And beans, there's beans, peas. Thank you for the reminder. My brain goes dead sometimes. So yes, 0 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight per day. That's for someone that's sedentary. For strength training, what we do, a balanced mobility, you need 1.2 to 1.7 grams per kilograms of body weight per day. 
And also a reminder that this is something that you may want to do a deficit on because of your calorie deficit if you're trying to lose weight. And so I really recommend only like three to 500 calorie deficit per day. So that means you're eating anywhere from 1,500 to 1,800 calories per day of real whole foods with lean proteins to eat with it, nuts and seeds, good fats, um, things like that in your day to get the proper nutrients in and burn calories, okay? So if you're an endurance athlete, you're gonna need a little bit more, a little bit, actually a little bit less. It's 1.2 to 1.4. Not all of us are endurance athletes either. That's running and stuff like that. You really want around 1.2 to 1.7 in that range grams per kilogram of your body weight okay per day to get in and in that being said i'm not big about weights and weights and measures i think it's a challenge to weigh things and most people don't have a scale to weigh things so i kind of have this rule of thumb i take my hand and my palm of my hand i'm circling just the palm not the outside to the fingers. The palm of my hand is where my protein fits in. And then I have two cups of fresh greens and veggies, whether they're grilled or steamed with the veggies. Sometimes I have raw green, I mean veggies, um, raw greens, sometimes steamed greens, sometimes sauteed, sauteed greens. There's so many different ways that you can have greens with chilies and garlic and yeah, just lovely ways to get your greens in and have them super flavorful. So that is the story on protein and it's just not rocket science. I think people are overthinking nutrition and not really understanding the basics of nutrition. Um, your basic food groups are protein and carbohydrates. That's it. You also need hydration in there, okay? So hydration is one of the big keys in weight loss. And if you're not properly hydrating your liver, you're gonna have a challenge losing weight, as well as if you do lose weight, it's gonna be a challenge to keep it off. Your liver needs to be hydrated properly, period, for everything to be able to process through your body, all the toxins, goes through your kidneys, everything. So, as well as your digestive tract, which is, First of all, your first brain. So if your digestive system is not working properly, the rest of your body is out of whack, period. And that really starts in the kitchen and how you perceive nutrition and what nutrients you're actually getting in through the day. So I really recommend getting into your food logs and really, I know it's tedious, but writing down everything you're putting in your mouth every single day, it takes about 10 minutes out of your day to create these food logs and really take a look at them and see where you're having issues with, whether it's a mindset thing or a time thing throughout your day. Use those logs to figure out what's going on and let's find solutions to where we kind of drop off the map for a minute and then come back up. Let's find a solution for when we hit that little point where instead of we go, oh, I just don't have time for this, and we go down for the day, where we go, okay, I've been here before. <laughs> I've had to deal with this. And you have the tools, you know how to move through it comfortably, easily. Sometimes it's not comfortable though. Um, I definitely want you a little uncomfortable through this process. It's what creates change. And not I'm not saying super uncomfortable, that doesn't mean change everything, but a little uncomfortable is good for you. It, it creates resistance in the mind, you think differently, your brain is activated, those cells in your body are all charged up, the adrenaline comes through your body, and, and even activates all those feel-good hormones like serotonin and dopamine and all of that stuff. So. Really think about that. Nutrition is not rocket science. We've been fed this line of bullshittery for freaking years about this triangle that we're supposed to eat that is killing us, okay? And because we are in our 
50s, 60s, 70s, it's affecting us the most because we are the people it started with. So go back to the beginning, your grandparents, your great grandparents, how they fed, hunter gatherers, that's really where it's at. And yeah, I mean, just be mindful of what you're eating, get into your food log, get into your mindset map. If you're having problems with it, shoot me an email or a message and let's chat about it and see what's going on, see how we can adjust your program to up your game, whether it's through nutrition or exercise. Okay, guys, know I'm here. Post any questions down below if you have any. Um, have a wonderful day, a wonderful, safe weekend, and tell me what you're doing this weekend. Stay solid. Remember, your body does not know it's the weekend. <laughs> have a great weekend, guys. Love you all.